Hello, this is Curtis Crow, the Photo Pro here, and today we have a Lightroom tutorial for you. Today we are going to talk about how to edit jewelry. Now, the great thing about jewelry is it's not as uh, unpredictable like skin, lighting, and all that other stuff is. Uh, pretty much most situations you can use pretty much the same brush in order to edit multiple photos. So what I have for you today is an outdoors photo in shade, an outdoors photo in the sun, a photo for you that was completely lit with a flash and a photo for you that is uh, lit with flash but has ambient light there and the great thing about those last two ones is they are indoors so i'm showing you pretty much every lighting situation uh, and i'm going to use just about the same brush for the rings the necklaces and all that stuff so to get started we're going to go ahead and go to our brush tab here and we are going to use a custom brush and if you want to create your own brushes I do highly recommend it I have my brush pretty much set here there we go 25 and that's about where I want it um, highlights and there we go you want to play with shadows but you want to be careful in what situation <clears throat> You want to play with shadows, but you want to be careful what situation you're in. Because if you're going around the neck, like we are here, and there's shadows, it's very, very easy to accidentally veer off and hit uh, the shadowed area on their neck, and it will make a weird line. So for this necklace here, we're going to avoid using the shadows tool in our brush. So here we go. Because clarity alone is enough to really darken some of those uh, darker places and brighten up those lighter places. Clarity, in my opinion, is a lot like contrast, except it's more boomier. So let's see where exactly we've already clicked. So we're going to go right here, and we're just going to be very careful. Now, the reason why I lower the highlights is because I want to bring in some of that detail again, some of that detail that's inside the gem, which we typically lose because they're blown out because it takes literally the rays of the sun and then amplifies it into multiple different directions. So when it shines in our camera, it's almost always a blown out shine. So using that highlight tool, we can bring some of that detail back and we want to be very careful here there we go and then we are going to double check our area in which we went ahead and made changes to and we're going to hit some of the spots that we missed real quick It's very important to double check your work, especially when you're editing something that, that has such strong edges and shape to it. Oops, yeah, that's fine. So if we just go like that. And now let's go ahead and hit done. And that's quite a big difference. Let's go ahead and make some more changes though, because I am feeling like we need to go down on the highlights a little bit more. And let's just bump clarity up to 35. Uh, there we go. Oh, I like that. And now you can see that the necklace here is popping a lot more. Now, it's very important that we hit all the jewelry because you don't want just the necklace to pop, just rings, just anything. So we're going to go ahead and hit the earring here. Turn off that. And with the earring, we're going to add more clarity because it's so small. We really, really want to make sure it does have some pop there. And that does. That makes a huge difference. And let's go ahead and hit this spot right here. We're going to use a smaller brush. Just go right along those edges. you got to be very careful because of the shadows. Just, go. Just follow the line. And let's hit the pendant. And then we're going to see if any of these changes make it pop just a little bit more. I like that. 
So now we zoom out and that is a pretty big difference. What you can do too is you can also uh, run it through one more time in order to intensify the effect. Uh, sometimes I use a larger brush depending on what the situation is just to soften the effect. Or uh, if anything I will also uh, run it with a super tiny brush and just try to get every single pixel the way it's supposed to be had. So we were a little sloppy there. Uh, we could always clean it up but for tutorial purposes we're not going to waste the time doing that. Now we have an earring here. Earrings Again, we're going to intensify that more, but being we already have the uh, the necklace settings pretty much in here, we're going to go ahead and hit that necklace one more time, and once we run over that, we'll do the earring. Boom, 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 boom. Pend it one more time. Boom, zoom out. Let's see if that looks good. That does. It's definitely popping. And now we're going to hit those earrings. And we're going to still use the same brush, but I'm going to show you what I like to do. I like to keep the same values uh, in the ratios in which that they are already in. So even though that does have some pop, we're going to go ahead and click here. And then we're going to click and drag after we select it. Drag it to the right to make it more intense. Boom, zoom on out, and then that's got some real pop to it. What we're also going to do is we are going to lessen the sharpening effect because that's the only piece that I don't want sliding with the rest of it because you're going to see it's, it's just not going to look right. So we're going to go ahead and just go like that, and that's how we want it. And what's great about this brush is it works on a lot of inanimate objects, not just earrings and rings and necklaces. But if we go over to here, and we even want to hit his flower just a little bit, we just go like this. It'll bring back the details from his highlights. It'll add a little bit of that clarity, which looks good on inanimate objects such as flowers. And that will help these items pop significantly. And bring back their detail so boom see how those flowers look a little bit better too and like i said it, it's great because this actually works in multiple lighting environments where a lot of brushes you have to make more significant adjustments in order to account for skin tones lighting situations shadows highlights all that stuff this is a lot more controlled so we're going to go back to the necklace and we're going to use that same brush we've been using and we're going to just hit it right there. We're going to zoom in a little bit more. Just look at that. We want to make sure we really get into these details here. Make them pop. And like I was saying earlier, it's the little adjustments that make the big difference. Because if we overdid the adjustments, it will look horribly fake. It'll look like we photoshopped them in there. Oops, and we're going to have to slow it down a little bit. Going a little too fast. But there we go. Want to make sure we only get the shadows in between the different gems and stuff like that. We don't want to get the shadows that's being casted by the necklace itself on the skin. And we don't want to get any of the shadows on the skin in general. Boom. Just like that. And then we can always hit that show mask to double check our uh, work. There we go. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And look at that, that is a pretty big difference. Let's go ahead and turn it off and turn it back on. Oh yeah, look at that. See, it's the little adjustments that really make it pop without it looking fake. So like I said earlier, we gotta make sure we hit all the jewelry. Uh, she's got an earring here, we're gonna hit that. And that makes a big difference. Um, I might even do it a little bit more. 
go for a second brush. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. And if your personal taste was how it looked before, then go ahead and you don't have to double uh, commit on the earring like I did right there. Now, here you want to be a little bit careful because clarity tools can make hair look greasy. So you want to be careful that you don't get too much of the hair in here, but we also want to make sure that we go a little bit outside the actual hair piece because there's some glaring there and this tool that we're using with the clarity and lowering the highlights, it'll get rid of some of that for us. Boom, look at that pop. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, here's the important thing. We also don't wanna forget the ring here. It was way off in the distance, and we don't wanna miss that. So we're gonna hit that real quick. And I usually do rings a bit differently, but for this particular image, we are going to just do it like that. Zoom on out and look at the pop. And as I edit it further, I'm sure that it'll look a little bit more apparent for the viewer. But for right now, again, these images are very, very mildly edited. They only have exposure and a little bit of color editing on there. So once I really get into the nitty and gritty, you'll see big differences there. Now we're going to move on to rings. Now I do edit rings a little bit more harshly. So we're going to go ahead and get in there and start the editing process uh, we're gonna go for a little bit more zoomed out and with rings if there's no color gems I'm gonna go ahead and lower the saturation for it just because sometimes your skin can reflect off the ring and change its color sometimes lighting can change its colors so we want it to look like how it's meant to look so we're gonna go ahead and lower saturation we're gonna start off at negative 40 and eh, let's go 35 and uh, we'll see how we like negative 35. The great thing about Lightroom is we can always change it afterwards. So we go here, clarity. Uh, we're going to up the clarity to probably a little over 50. And highlights, contrast, and we're going to darken shadows a little bit. Boom. Let's give that a try. And we are actually going to lower the sharpness a little bit there we go I love it I'm liking it I'm loving it ba -da -ba -ba -ba. just like that now it's hard to tell this might be a gold band so what I'm going to do is just for this one part here I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that saturation I'm just going to hit it right here Oh, a good thing to do is always check your other photos as a point of reference. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's popping right off the paper. Do you see that? That minor adjustments is literally making that ring look like it's coming out of the photo. And I love that look. That's why I'm a little bit more drastic with my uh, rings is because people spend a lot of money on rings and they want them to really shine in their photos. So you go the extra mile and it'll look like it's falling right off the paper. Go here, hit up that, really bring in those details, go back over here, and then we're going to do the negative saturation. Oh yeah, look at that. Now if you notice the uh, redness looks a little off, that's because I'm using the auto masking tool. Uh, you don't have to use that, I'm just using it because I usually just have it on. Um, it is situational, so you may want to turn it off. And we're just going to minus this a little bit. Oh, look at that. Those are two rings that are definitely popping right out of the photo. I love it. Put a seal on it. It's good. See that? See why going a little bit more dr drastic on something so small can make a huge difference? Uh... The only thing that stinks is we can't do this on people because if we do it exactly like this on people, it looks terrible if you over edit them. Uh, but rings, because they're so contrasting, so boomy, uh, it really goes a long way. So now for our last photo. And again, we've been using basically the same exact brush for all of these. You can set up one preset, make minor adjustments, and... Oop. And you're good to go. Uh, 
you can run and gun with that uh, with that type of preset. So I highly recommend that you do set up a preset. I know I don't have one, but that's because I like to to go with the flow. Typically, it really doesn't make a huge difference because no, even though I go with the flow, quote unquote, I turn off auto masking for this part. I oh yeah, that's better. Oh, but I'm going a little too hard on those shadows. Just go back a couple. Auto masking now. There we go. Oh, no, turn that off. So we're going to go and turn off auto masking. We're going to see if this makes it look a little bit better. Oh, yeah, look at that. Auto masking again, it can handle highlights kind of weird. Oop, when we're hitting those shadows. So we want to make our brush smaller sometimes as we progress. And the reason why we're having so much problems with this one isn't because the lighting's any different. It's because we're still running off the ring setting. So we go ahead and go to 30. And we'll keep that. We'll keep the rest where it's at. Except, shh. yeah, it's good. So boom. And look at how that's popping. So now we're going to hit that ring. See, it does have a little bit of gold, and that's why I said looking at your other photos uh, is, is important when you're editing these things, because if I didn't know that and I would have got rid of all the saturation, it would have looked weird to the viewer, which is going to be the wedding couple, which actually own the ring. So that's why these things are important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just, oh, yeah, that's good stuff right here. And then we go ahead and... There we go. Ring is popping now. Necklace is popping. We got another ring right here. We got a hit. So let's go ahead and hit that one real quick and let's see here. Boom, 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 just like that. Now the boominess has been added there and now we just need to get the last item here, which is an earring. And once we hit that, we're done with the jewelry for this photo. So see, I was showing you how to do that and it only took me a few minutes per photo, even when showing you how to do it. And if I would have had presets set up, prior it would have been even faster so it's these really quick things that we can do to these photos that'll make a big difference especially for the person that's receiving the photos that own this jewelry a lot of these things are heirlooms from the family from grandmothers great grandmothers from parents fathers everything that add sentimental value to their moments such as uh, weddings and stuff like that so if we can add that sentimental value and make it pop in their photos their photos are gonna mean a lot more to them. If you do have any questions, leave a comment down below. This has been Curtis Crow, the photo pro, and as I always do, toodles.